Hello everyone, in this video I will show you my latest Houdini asset that allows you to very easily add extra geometry and complexity on almost any object. This technique is also known as Gribble. On my screen you can see four examples that can be achieved with different geo inputs and with the Gribble asset. I prepared a test scene in Houdini to explain how the tool works with all the different parameters and options. On the left we have the Gribble tool that calculates this geometry, then on the right we have three nodes that are used for rendering. One is the actual geometry, the other one are some points that we'll see later, and the other one is the background. So only those three nodes are actually rendering. So let's fire up the render and see how it looks. This is how it looks right now. Also this effect is achieved with those three lights that you can see here. There's also a camera with no particular settings. In the material context we have three materials. One is for the geometry itself, the other one is for some points, and the other one is for the background. So let's see how we can configure this tool. Let's jump into the Gribble tool geo node and build this from scratch. Here you can see we have a switcher with four inputs. One is this abstract geometry, the other one is a grid with a group, the next one is a torus, and the final one is a grid with a mountain displacer. Let's start with the first one. I will add uh, Y Gribble. If you don't have the tool installed, uh, it's very easy, you just need to copy the provided HDA into your user documents Houdini and OTL. There's also a text document that describes this in the package. So we have the geometry and then if we highlight the Gribble, you can see it has one input and two outputs. And on the right we have a lot of parameters. The parameters are really simple actually. So let's set everything to zero at first. Okay, right now the tool just divides the geometry in random ways. As you can see, this was how the geometry was at the beginning and this is how it is now. The first slider is the seed that can actually vary how the geometry is uh, splitted. Usually you don't really need to use this only if, if you really want to change the randomness. Then we have some extrusion parameters. Everything here is random so uh, I can say maximum extrusion 1 and what happens here it creates extrusions for each face of the primitive. Let's leave this at 0.5 and 0.1. Okay. Then we can also use inset with the same principle, so we just we can inset uh, the extruded faces and of course add uh, randomness to this also. Okay, so far so good. There's a set of gribbles built right inside the tool, which I also used to create those examples that you saw earlier. Of course you can also input your custom geometry, but we'll see that later. So the next parameter is the gribble iterations. We'll set this to 1 for now. And everything turns black right now because we don't have normals. So I'll just go here and compute normals. This is on by default in the tool, but I just turned everything off for now. So right now you see nothing really happens. And that's because we don't have a scale for the gribbles. So let's say we, have, we want a minimum scale of 0 and a max scale of 1. And right now you can see something happens here. There's some, some geometry that's getting applied, of course. There's a, a small uh, error because we also don't have a, a Z scale and um, some randomness. Uh, so let's put Z scale to 1. And you see right now that the gribbles range from 0, almost like the same surface of their uh, extruded faces, or they can uh, go really high extrusion. Okay, so let's say minimum scale would be 0.1 or 0.2. So all of them have a bit of extrusion. Right now what happens, you can see that every gribble is placed on the middle of the primitive. So this random positioning, it's exactly for that. Uh, I can random position this on the X axis, so you see they, they moved. And I can do the same on the Y axis. I can go even more. If I exaggerate, the gribbles will actually go outside the primitive. So maybe you want to achieve this effect. Also, uh, you can see if they go outside, the gribble it, it don't have a back face. So that's also something that we can change. If we go here into bevel edges, we can say output back. So now they also have back faces. This is just for optimization. So if the gribbles are in the center, then you really don't need the back face. And this is a random position for the z-axis. So this should be really low because otherwise your gribbles would be floating like this. Uh, maybe you want this effect, but I'll just leave it as it was. And then we have some randomized rotation for them. So you can see they, they just rotate at 90 degrees randomly. And then, uh, of course, 
to achieve a more interesting effect, we can have add bevels to the edges. So I'll just take this box and you can see there's some small bevel applied. You can control it from here. Let's say we want to go to 0 0.02. So you see now it's smaller. And of course, th those are normal bevel parameters. In order to make it more complex, we just need to increase the Gribble iterations, let's say to five for now. This will take a bit of time to calculate. So this uh, particular tool, it's a bit slow, but the result is, uh, is worth it. So as you can see now, there's a lot of Gribbles and there's a lot of complexity that's, that wasn't present before. So I think it looks pretty nice. So these are the controls for setting up the Gribbles. We also have uh, some random controls for random color. And if you want to make something, you know, really colorful, you can leave it as it is. But I just use those uh, colors as a mask. So we can also, of course, we have a seed here. And we can also convert this to grayscale. So we can use it as a Luma mask for our shaders. Uh, then we have a ramp that can change the, the contrast. Of course, we can also do this inside the shader itself. And I think we're done with the first settings. Then there's another functionality which I added. So this uh, functionality exports the points if you want to add some uh, emission, like some uh, sci-fi spacecraft. So if we move this out to geo and set it to the first output, you can see that this is the actual geometry that we see. But for example, if you take this out points, it's just a null and put it to the second output, we see that we exported some points. So actually those are the points that sit on the mesh itself, on the Gribble mesh. And what I can do right now, if I go to export points, you see this is on by default. Uh, if I leave it off, nothing really happens. So I can export the points and what I can do is uh, change the spread angle. This angle, it's actually uh, selecting the front face of the Gribbles. So we don't have too much, um, too, mu too many points. So actually it's selecting this face it's set to 90 degrees. But more importantly, it's actually this uh, delete random points because if I leave it to zero, you see there are a lot of points and they're quite evenly spaced. So we don't really want that. Uh, I tend to put this quite high, let's say 0.98 or something like that. It depends on how many points you want. And then uh, we can also put some points on the geo. You see that that adds more points. It also creates two different groups, but I really don't want to do that right now. What I want to do is uh, set a p-scale for the points uh, and I can just use this node to see how big they are. So I just use a copy to points and a sphere with the uniform scale of one. And if we enable copy to points, now we can see the scale of the points. And if we go back to the controls, what we have here, we have like a minimum point scale, a maximum point scale, a global multiplier and a seed. So let's see, uh, we can just change the minimum points to, let's say, almost zero, maximum points to be bigger. And then we have a global multiplier to make something like this. Then what we can also do if, if we use the mask here, the Luma mask, we can also transfer the same mask to the points. Uh, maybe we want to use different uh, Luma intensities on the emission. So if I go here, we say transfer gribble color to points. And now if we have a look, let's turn this to dark. You see they have different grayscale values. Also, if I go here, I can change those values to make it more contrasty, but I can also do that inside the shader. And of course, also for the P scale, I can change the scale with the ramp. Okay, so this is the second control for exporting points. Just to recap, so we have the initial geometry, then we have the Gribble tool with the initial settings that actually creates first the extrusion, then adds more iterations of Gribbles. And then we have the Gribble settings, uh, which contain of scale, random position on all axes, random rotation and uh, random Z scale. Then we can change the bevel or add bevels, as you can see here to catch some reflections. We can also output the back of the Gribbles if they exceed their initial primitive. Of course, we, we need to add normals so here I just wanted sharp edges. So they all, all look like sharp and, and shiny. And then we can add the random color and transform it to Luma mask. And for the points, we have points on, on the Gribbles, which we can delete however we want, or we can, or we can keep all of them. 
I'll just delete them. And then we have a custom P scale for all the points. And also we can transfer the color of the points from the initial geometry. Just as a side note, if we don't have any color on the initial geometry, let's say we turn this off, then the points won't have color. So you need to have this turned on so they can grab the color. Let's say if we use like just a color, you can see now the points are really colorful and you can also play with this. If we have a look at the parameters that the tool exports, they're quite a lot. So we can use further, it's a CD. Uh, we also have like uh, the normals and a lot of groups. So if we go here and try to blast some of the groups, so we can have uh, front faces, and those are just the front faces of the geometry on which the gribbles are applied. Then we have the gribbles themselves. So you can just render the gribbles without any other geometry underneath. And that's really cool actually. And then just uh, to have them here, you can also have the edges. So maybe you want to apply a different shader or something. And then you also have all the input gribbles. So you see there are eight type of gribbles. So I just select, if I just select gribble zero, you see this is the shape that uh, represents gribble zero. And I can just take all of those and maybe do some other uh, calculations on them. Now let's see how this tool works on different geometry types. I'll just take this tool, plug in the switch node. Of course, it takes a bit to calculate again because we have a, quite a lot of iteration. So uh, right now we are using this geometry. And if I go to the switcher, I can just add one here. And now we will change the geometry to the grid. So this is just a simple grid. I will change the random color to luminance so it looks better. And now speaking about another feature, that would be grouping. So you see here on the grid, I have a group created from a bunch of points. And what I can do, the group is called Gribbles Group. I can just come here and set this custom group to Gribble Group. So now we will only have gribbles applied on that group. Points that I mean the primitive that I didn't select it don't have any gribbles and the other ones do. So I think this is also really nice when you can also merge the geometry together without having gribbles all over the place. Then the third, it's a torus. I think the torus looks really nice, looks like a spaceship. Uh, and basically it's like a very simple torus actually. And the last example would be this uh, triangulated grid with a mountain displacer. So let's see how this looks. I'll switch the, the switcher to number three. Okay, so I think the, this looks pretty nice. What happens with the triangulated geometry is that usually I would suggest to decrease the random position. So let's say 0.1 and maybe 0.1 again, because they they are placed on the triangles and if they are moved too much, they get out too much on, on the other surface. So let's see if I put 0.1 and 0.1, it should look better. Yeah, so you can see they, they look a lot better now. Speaking about the last feature would be the custom objects. So as you can see, the gribbles have already some built-in objects, but if you want, you can build your own objects. On the left here, I have some custom objects. You see this, this one and also this one. They're just built for, from very simple geometry. One thing to note is that they need to be oriented like this. So if they're standing like this on, on pointing upwards, they won't work. Okay, so you see we have two types of gribbles and in the tool here, I can just click on it on custom objects and enable custom objects. So you will see now uh, it calculates again and nothing really happens because it doesn't have any object. Just to make this smoother, I will just change the iterations to one. And now what I can do to custom objects, I can just add two of them. And in the first one, I had this one. Yeah, here I had this one. Okay, so now if we just change the switcher to the first input, because I like more this geometry uh, and calculate the gribbles again, you see it has those custom shapes. Also, if we want to go more extreme, we can just try with a torus. Uh, and as I said, we need to rotate it. And now we can just select this, add another object and add a torus here. And we should see the torus around here, you see? So this is how you can plug in custom objects. Okay, and now let's do a final render. I'll just do some cleaning around here. I will disable custom objects because we don't want them. Move the iterations to five. Actually, I changed the iteration to 10, so they look a lot better right now. Okay, and what I did here, I just grabbed the, the geometry. So Gribble Tool Audio and just scale it down a bit because that's how I set up the lights. 
and then uh, furthermore I grabbed the points and scaled them down the same way so as you can see here we have the camera we have the geometry and then we have the points and of course the background so we put all of those together what's important for the points is that uh, I enable particle rendering so I don't have to clone uh, spheres manually on all of them and there's for redshift especially there's a global multiplier that I thought it was too much so changes to 0.3 and then on the render we have materials on each one so this one is points the other one is geo and the one the other one is background if we go to the material context what we have here uh, I used like a curvature on, on the diffuse just to have some some variation then I used the color of the points actually on of the primitives and did some ramps around here to use it as in a material blender as a mask let's start the render to see how it looks so as you can see the first material it's just a gray to black material then if I grab the mask that Houdini created I can put it into a ramp and then I combine the ramp with the curvature so it looks a bit more interesting and use those in a material blender so this is the first material then we have the second material which is more metallic and then we have the third material which is uh, almost like copper one thing that i also added for some extra detailing is this texture that you also have in the pack actually i think i need to enable the triplanar so this texture which also also resembles some gribbles on a 2d image that adds some extra bump to all the materials so i think you can you can already see that around here so it tries to add some very small details that seems that they are geometry but it's only the texture itself okay and then in the points grab the cd of the points then we go through a color ramp and add the emission weight to three so we can see those are the points that we created and those get rendered as some small lights or something like that i hope you enjoy the tool and you create a lot of interesting things with it thank you